Hi, it's Andrew here at Servermania with your blog recap. Today, cost to consider before building a server room. Setting up servers in your office requires a lot of space and could be costly to both set up and maintain, to put it bluntly. It used to be the norm for modern businesses to have to build, set up, and equip an on-site server room themselves. The sky is the limit when considering real estate for one, as well as power consumption, network security, server and network uptime, fire suppression, a whole list of other expenses needing for operating a server room. These expenses are both hefty yet crucial to the operation, but know that an on-site server room is necessary to a business. I will touch on the requirements and costs, highlighting the reasons on why renting with a company like Servermania is both substantially an economical and a technological good choice to make. First off, the location. The building and available space being considered should both have secure and monitored access both entering and exiting the building as well as inside and outside of the server room itself. This should include CCTV monitoring for the server room as well as surrounding areas, as well as key card or biometric access protected by heavy duty doors with electronic locks. The more security, the better. The space considering must also have reliable power supply from the utility company. Because brownouts, blackouts, power surges, and so on can cause valuable data to be lost or damaged, it's important not to plug your servers directly into utility power. This can be prevented by using an uninterrupted power supply, or a UPS for short. A UPS provides a short amount of power in the event of a power failure while the generator kicks on and keeps your servers online. A power distribution unit that is mounted within the server racks powering the servers performs this. The unit is large enough to accommodate bulk and heavy server racks and cages containing heat producing servers and power units which require air conditioning units, humidity control, dust filtration, as well as ventilation ducting keeping all the, environment, all the equipment in the environment at or below 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Now higher temperatures would greatly increase the likelihood of component failure and fire which brings us to our next point. Fire suppression. Fire suppression is a crucial measure to take when considering the capital that's invested in servers. A fire corrupting or destroying all the data and equipment would be detrimental to one's business or residence. So really, you don't want to skip on fire suppression. In addition to all of these concerns, we have one thing to touch on, networking. Depending on how many servers you have, keep in mind that you'll need adequate amounts of core routers, switches, and of course, adequate cables. All the networking equipment will be neatly arranged within the secure equipment rack within the server room. Differently sized server rooms will have different needs. Small to ones may be able to accommodate just using a basic Linux distribution running something like PFSense. Server rooms bigger than those need to have dedicated routers through manufacturers like Juniper or Cisco, for examples, leaders in networking equipment. To view more great content like this, visit servermania.com and click on blog.